The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OA Now here. I'm Sammy Termina, blogger around the OA, one of the hosts of Blast Three Brain Cells and the host of Between Terminators on Oriented with Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on Local Voice on SoundCloud and those um, watching on YouTube and also those watching on Oriented with Television. A lot to break down. Um, of course, we've had the, um, we had, we got to break down some football games. We got to break down some volleyball games. Um, preview the top, preview some girls basketball coming up. Of course, um, we're in, we're, ha- of course, girls basketball. Starts next week. Um, boys basketball tryouts start today. Um, so we got a lot to break down. Um, and a lot of news around the OA as well. Of course, um, big news out of foot out of Pontiac. Of course, um, Ken Wade, the head coach of Pontiac, stepped down. Um, according to the um, according to what was according to the um post. Of course, Wade um Wade um he was at Pontiac for two years. Finished the 0 18 record. Um. Corner zip recruiter. Um, the job was posted last week. Um, Pontiac's really improved offensively. I mean, they've really been playing re- really good football. Um, despite the record, I mean, their offense really improved. Um, they did return several key players. Obviously, Dave Van Hall at running back, Kanye Donaldson at quarterback, um, Bryce Brown at, on the line, and Devon and Devon Johnson the secondary coming back. I mean, Pont- there's the pieces there, but. Program strength is one you got to look at for next year for Pontiac. Um, obviously, that's going to be the thing to really look at going forward there um, with them. So that is a, um, you know, so when you look at Pontiac, obviously, you know, they're going to be starting from scratch again. I mean, this is a team that's been 5-82 and um, 82 now since um, 2011. That's something that's really, whoever takes that job at Pontiac, is um, going to have to acquire a lot of patience. Um, if you can require a lot of patience with the Phoenix, I think that'll be, you know, um, that's going to be the key, I think, for next year for Pontiac is building program strength and also, um, you know, just building the program around. If you can do that, I think you're going to be in good shape going forward for Pontiac. So, so that was a shock, you know, with Kenway stepping down over at Pontiac. Um, let's go now to, um, recap some volleyball and then we'll go back into the football as well. Um. You know, when you look at volleyball, people are going to say, well, you know, Berkeley took taking on Northville. Um, it was going to be a tough match for Berkeley anyway, taking on Northville. Um, and Berkeley competed. They fought at Royal Oak Middle School, but there was just no answer for Novi, um, for Nova, for Northville. And Northville ended up winning that one um, pretty convincingly. Um, they ended up going to the next round, um, and they got the state final um, they t- where they took on Birmingham Marion. Um you know, I got a lot to talk about Birmingham Marion. Um, why I, I I think you know the injury to Kayla Kogan really changed that matchup. And if if she would have played in that game, I think Clarkson would have moved on, um, and Birmingham Marion would have been out. Um, that's just my honest opinion, and I'll break that one down. Um, I think Birmingham Marion, to be honest with you, um, and I know people are gonna criticize me and question me on this is. Do I think Birmingham and Marion deserve their third state title in a row? Um, I asked this question, then I'm going to ask this question here. If Kayla Kogan was healthy, um, do you think Clarkson would have moved on? I mean, yes, Birmingham and Marion was rallying. Clarkson was, I thought, to be honest with you, in that quarterfinal game with Clarkson and Birmingham and Marion, um, you know, I thought Clarkson was a better team. I mean, I really did. Um, but we're going to break that one down. Um, look at next year for volleyball. Um, but let's look at Berkeley. I mean, it was an incredible one for Berkeley this year. Really was. Um, you know, I mean, like for the Bears, I mean, like, you know, for them to get to their first their first regional title, their first um, you know, their first, I mean, they won a district for the second straight year. Um, to get to the final to get to the state quarter final, it says a lot. Um, they do lose three very good players. Um you know, they, I know Berkeley was a senior heavy team this year, um, but I think that that program's built for the future. I really think the Bears are built for that. And to run into a very good Northville program, I think that says a lot. Now, I'm very curious to see what the league does with Berkeley because could they put them in the red? I mean, I think 
if Berkeley were to play in the red this year, next year, and I think that would be a great idea, is, you know, putting them against the likes of Clarkston, Lake Orion, um, Oxford, Seahome, um, Troy. I mean, you put them in that, I think it's a good idea. I think it'd be very, I think it'd be a good idea. I think for Berkeley as a program to keep growing, um, to keep, you know, getting better as a program. Um, and I think that's a good way. I think for Berkeley, if you get the call up to go to the red, take this as a challenge and accept the challenge. I mean, you know, you think about this. You get some good volleyball into the um into the barn over there. Um, you know, that's what I call Berkeley's gym. Um but I think if Berkeley were to keep going as a program, keep improvement as a program, I think they should go to the red. I really do. I mean, the red the red's a division where everybody knows what that division does to you. It is a difficult division. And I think Berkeley would fit really well in that division. I really do. Um I think Berkeley they they've had an incredible year. I mean, really have. I mean, they lost a tub on to Rochester. Um, but they've managed to bounce back in the postseason, won their district at home, um, then won the regional at Detroit Renaissance, um, and then running into a very good North Build program. So that's something to be a comp- very proud of if you're Berkeley. Um, so that's something really proud of. Um, let's look at Clarkson, Birmingham, and Marion. As I mentioned earlier, kind of had a little rant on this um, about this matchup here. I'm going to ask every Birmingham Marion fan this question. You know, yes, you won the Division I state title, I think, for a third straight year. But you got to ask yourself this question. What if Kayla Kogan played? What if she didn't get hurt? Because she was literally dominating you all night. Literally was. I remember what she did against Lake Orion. I mean, you know, she was the difference maker in that game against the Dragons in the district final. But I'm going to ask... Every Birmingham Marion fan, this question. What if Kogan played the fifth set? What if she played it? Was she a, she, sure she would not have been the same player, but if she did, you know, you got to really, you got to be, you got to, you got to put her accounted for. I mean, she was literally tearing Birmingham Marion up, literally. I mean, Clarkson had a great game plan against Birmingham Marion. I mean, they, she literally, they literally did. I mean, you really look at that matchup, you know, I really felt if she played that whole game, you know, if she didn't get hurt, Cl- we're talking Clarkson and Battle Creek. We're not talking Birmingham, Marion, and Battle Creek. I mean, that's the difference in that game. When Kogan got hurt, Birmingham, Marion went on a run, won the fifth set pretty convincingly, Went to the next, went to, went to Battle Creek, and won a state title. You got to ask yourself that question. You really do. What if Kogan played in that game? What if she played? What if she played all? What if she played the entire match? What if she was fully healthy? Because if she was fully healthy, Clarkson wins that match that night in St. Clair, up in Port Huron. I mean, that's really what it is. Really, what it is. I mean, and people in Birmingham are going to say, well, you know, I mean, like, you know, what if, you know, Clarkson's a great opponent, you know what I mean? But you got to ask yourself that question. You really do. I mean, yes, Birmingham Marion had a really good team. They did. I mean, they had a really good team. I mean, they do lose a lot next year. They do. But bottom line is, Clarkson had them. Clarkson had them dead to rights. They had them in that game. I'm going to be honest with you. Birmingham Marion's lucky to win that match against Clarkson. Really was. Because I thought Clarkson was a better team in that game. Really was. Um, but it's really unfortunate that an injury like that, um, you know, cost Clarkson their whole season. Really unfortunate. Um, but that was the difference. You know, once Colgan went down, once Colgan went down, Birmingham Marion went on that run, and... Clarkson couldn't finish the deal. And, you know, and then Birmingham Marion just took over late. That really was a, that really was a difference in that game. Really was. Um, when I look at volleyball next year, people are going to ask me about this. Is who do you think might be favored in the league next year? 
I mean, Clarkson and Berkeley for sure. You got to put them maybe one, two for sure. Um, Lake Orion loses a lot. Um, Oxford, they're going to be okay. Troy, I think, loses a lot. Um, you know, the OAA next year, I think, is going to be wide open. I really do. I mean, I think Clarkson's your best team in this division, in the league next year as a whole. Um, but Berkeley's going to be right there in the thick of it. I mean, it depends where I think the league puts Berkeley. I mean, if the league puts Berkeley in a um, in the white, um, then I think Berkeley should should do pretty well in that division. I mean, I don't know if they'll take Rochester. I don't know, but that's gonna be that's gonna be really interesting to see what happens. Um, bottom line is, you know, I think that um, you know, but clearly next year Clarkston's the best team in this league. Um, bottom line, it's no secret. I mean, there is a reason why Clarkson won the red this year. There is a reason why Clarkson, you know, did what they did. I mean, they're, they're clearly one of the top teams in the state of Michigan for a reason. Now, people want to say, okay, um, you know, when you look at the red, who do you think is the next best team in the red? I mean, yeah, Lake Orion loses a lot. I mean, Stony Creek, they won a district title this year. Um, Adams, you know, with them, I mean, like, just surprised how the district final went for them. Um, really with them really was the, um, you know, I, I couldn't believe how they lost to Stoney. I mean, really couldn't, but you know, you got to put them in the conversation. Um, and then, you know, when you look at, you know, so there's a lot of wide opens in the red next year for volleyball. There really is. Um, but bottom line is, um, but bottom line is Clarkson's clearly your best team. I mean, I mean, like they're going to be very good next year for coach Allison Smith. I mean, like they're going to be really good. I mean, that's how I look at it with Clarkson. I mean, you know, they're going to be solid. Um, so we'll see what happens going forward there. Um, and then in the blue, obviously, you know, watch for, um, you know, Safia had a nice year. Um, and the blue, I mean, Harper Woods, they had a good year. Um, so we'll see what happens. I mean, we will see what happens going forward with the OA when it comes to volleyball. Okay, now let's go to football a little bit here. I want to talk football here. Um, when you look at the two games we had this week, um, obviously division two, you know, it was going to be tough between them um, for Groves and Warren D. the Sal. Um, obviously the difference in that game was the fact that Warren D. the Sal, I mean, yes, that game. You know, it went down to the, um, it was a 41, it was, I mean, Warren D. LaSalle won that one over Groves, um, 41 to, um, 43-15. Um, it was going to be tough, but, you know, when you look at starting off the game, down 14 nothing four minutes into the game, you know, that was going to be your ball game. I mean, it really was. I mean, they scored a touchdown in the first four minutes and they recovered a, um, covered a kickoff. And then they went down and scored. I mean, like, I mean, Groves was down 14 nothing. I mean, I don't know if Groves felt that, you know, that they were defeated after that. I don't, I don't, certainly wouldn't think so because, you know, they've been down two scores before. Look at the game against Seaholm. They were down 12 nothing early in that game. But they felt confident they could come back. I mean, yes, you're down 14 nothing against a really good Warren D. South team. Um, you know, you kind of felt like, they could come back, but it looked like in the game that, you know, they were just overwhelmed in that one. And yes, usually, you know, when you play Warren DSL or anyway in the Catholic League, it's going to be a tough matchup for you. And the bottom line was it was going to be tough. I mean, they were down 35 nothing at the half. And, you know, and that's a tough matchup for it. That, that, that's a tough, tough scenario you know, when you're down 35, nothing to half, you know, just virtually getting dominated. Um, you know, I mean, like, but Groves did show some life. Um, they did stop the running clock at one point uh, a couple times. I mean, they got a touchdown from, they got a 60-yard pick six touchdown from Chris Little. Um, and they also got a 24-yard passing score from Kane Hardy and Jack Wayner. I mean, that was Groves' scoring of the night. I mean, they converted on, on a two-point conversion. I mean, Groves fought in that game. They really did. I mean, you know, despite the score, um, 
you know, I thought the difference in that game was the first half. I mean, Groves won the second half 15-7. to 7. I mean, like, oh, 15-8. That was the difference. I mean, but the difference in the game was the first half. And so when you look at Groves next year, I mean, they do got a lot coming back. I mean, you return Kalen Hardy. You got Zach Rogers also coming back. You also got, um, you know, you got some, your defense was very young this year. Um, you got some proven playmakers. Of course, um, nobody expected Groves to go this far. I mean, especially where they were at week two when they lost to Oxford. Um, you know, people looked at Groves and say, okay, um, you know, when they played Oxford, they lost that game. Um, it was a tough way for them to lose that one. You know, I yes, I get Oxford's playing with a lot of emotion, but, you know, that had to hurt Groves too, losing that game. I mean, people thought, okay, you know, Groves was done. They were in trouble. And Groves had to fight. They had a battle. Um, picked up some good wins. They knocked off Harper Woods. Knocked off Lupia Hills. I mean, those were some good wins for them at the time. Um, then they beat Seaholm. That was a big deal for them. When Seaholm was reeling a little bit. I mean, they were coming off that loss of Farmington. Groves went in there and just beat Seaholm, you know, on their home field. Um, and then once the postseason came, I mean, Groves had no issue... Um, with um Warren Mott, they they beat Warren Mott. Um, and then they played um Seaholm in the district final, and they rolled them. I mean, like I couldn't believe it. They were down twelve nothing, came back, um, and won that one. Scored twenty six unanswered, win twenty six to twelve. <laughs> and then they get to the district final. Um, and this is they get to the district final, and um, you know, regional final against um. Livonia against Livonia Franklin. Livonia Franklin been playing really good football. Um, rolling with a ton of confidence. I mean, like, got a really good running back, good quarterback, and grows behind the running game of their offensive line and the play of Josh Woods. I mean, went and stunned Livonia Franklin on the road. That tells you something where this young where this program's been. They've been a very young team this year, especially on defense, and they've managed to bounce back. And next year, I think Groves is going to be primed maybe to have a special year. So we'll see. I mean, I mean, yes, Groves has been into the um state semifinals um twice in the last um twice in the last 6 years. Um three times the last 6 years. Um but now, you know, if you're coach Brendan Flaherty, you now know what you got to do to break through. And you got to break through you know, you got to find a way to break through to try to get the Ford field. Um, yes, Warren D. LaSalle was a very good team. They were well coached. Um, this is a well, you know, and it was going to be a tough task for them. But the bottom line was, you know, you got to give um, Warren D. LaSalle credit. I mean, they've been really good ever since that loss to Birmingham Brother Rice. Um, they've turned around their team. I mean, they've really, I mean, they've really have been a team that's been on a mission. I know they got a good quarterback in Brody Drodge back. Um, you know, he had a nice game. Running back, running it, tech solid. They got a good defensive lineman. Um, so now you got Warren D. LaSalle going to the state final, taking on Grand Rapids Forest Hill Central, who knocked off Dexter in overtime, um, which that was a stunner for me. I didn't expect Dexter, you know, to go down. I mean, like, you know, I didn't expect Dexter to fall in double overtime. I mean, like to um, but there was a lot of a lot of wacky stuff happened west side of the state. Obviously, you had the the weather and the snow. Um, over here in the east side of the state, here, I mean, it was it was cold, yes, but you know, it wasn't as bad as it was the west side where they got. I mean, like where I think Grand Rapids, Muskegon area, they almost got up to a foot of snow. I mean, we're not talking Buffalo, like, where they got at least almost six feet of snow. Um, but bottom line is, I think the weather had a lot to do with what happened. And I know it certainly had a hand what happened over at DeWitt. Um, but that's going to be, um, we're going to talk that in a couple minutes. Um, but when you look at Groves this season, obviously, you know, if you're Coach Brennan Flaherty, now you know what you got to do. I mean, you really know what you have to do to make sure that you guys, to make sure 
that if you want to go to Ford Field, you know what you got to do. I mean, you got to knock off some of these teams. You got to knock off, you know, does going up a division help you? I mean, the White has been really, it's been a good league. The White's been good. I mean, obviously this year with Southfield, you look at Rochester, um, obviously those are the two teams you really got to look up at, obviously. Um, and I think, you know, when you look at those teams, especially, you know, when you look at the red, obviously, when you have those powerhouse teams there, when you look at a team like West Bluefield, you look at Clarkston, you look at Lake Orion, you look at Adams, you look at Oxford, Stony Creek, don't, that's not easy. You know, that division is virtually the kiss of death in the state. And, you know, the white, you know, it's not a bad division as, as all, at all either. I mean, obviously, Southfield, you got, um, I mean, you got Rochester, who I think, Rochester, I'm very curious to see what happens to them next year. Um, but for Groves next year, don't, I mean, don't be surprised with them. They're going to be solid. I think Groves will be, do I think Groves could be the second best team in the white next year? Maybe, maybe. So we'll see what happens with them um, when you talk Groves. Um, we're going to talk shortcomings in a couple minutes as well, but let's break down the game over Adam DeWitt between um, Clarkson and Caledonia. Um, now, I didn't expect to see what happened with Clarkston. I mean, this is the first time they were shut out since 2019. Um, with Caledonia winning that one 21 nothing. Now, the difference in that game was the Caledonia defense. Um, they shut down Ethan Clark, made Ethan Clark work for his yards. He had 22 carries for 135 yards. Um, Mike Hine got hurt early um, first drive. Um, Stephen Kozak had to come in. Um, didn't play well. Clarkson threw three interceptions in the fourth quarter. Um, you know, they've had, they had a punt a couple times. They turned the ball over a couple down, turned the ball run downs a couple times. Um, but a lot of that has to go, has to give credit to where credit to the fighting Scott's defense. Um, they had a good game plan for Clarkson and, you know, it's just, Sometimes it just wasn't your day. And for Coach Justin Pintar and the Wolves, it just wasn't their day. Um, the difference was in that game had to be was, you know, Caledonia took, I mean, they were able also to run the ball against Clarkson in miserable conditions. I mean, of course, as I mentioned, it, it was snowing like crazy. I mean, who would ever thought that Clarkson would give up 49 carries for 240 yards on the ground as a team? That's what happened that game. I mean, that's really what happened. Um, was Clarkson's defense was not able to stop the ground attack. I mean, and it showed. Obviously, you know, when you look at a player like Brock Townsend, who um, he had a really nice game for them. Um, he had a, um, you know, he had a nice game on both sides of football. He made his game-saving tackle on Ethan Clark. Um, you know, that would have went for a touchdown had he not tripped him up. Um you look at obviously the um you look at obviously of course what the zone read option did. I mean, obviously I remember Brake Heron, um, he had a twenty eight yard rushing score off the zone read, and I don't know where Clarkson's defense I don't know where the linebackers were in that one, you know, stopping the zone read. I mean, Clarkson's been normally good all year long against teams, you know, they've had their struggles against teams that run the zone read, but I just think that, you know, you know, I just didn't expect that they would give up um, you know, a twenty eight yard scam twenty yard scamper for a touchdown. And then, you know, they gave up a um a one yard score as well. Of course, Thompson had a one yard score as well. Um, and also got an interception as well. Um it was it was shocking. I mean I mean, you kind of would have expected, you know, if Clarkson would have played the ground I mean like the um Clarkson likes to do is always they like to play the ground the uh, the time possession game the time possession clock the gate that type of game um and you can't make mistakes when you do that and Clarkson made a ton of mistakes in that game I mean obviously you got to give Caledonia a lot of credit defensively um I don't know what they saw in the games against um Rochester Adams or Davison or they might have just went back and maybe watch some games in the red. I mean, like, obviously, I don't know what their coaching staff did um, that, you know, 
how they stopped Ethan Clark was astonishing. How they stopped him, I couldn't believe it. Um, but also, you know, for Clarkston, you know, for a team, you know, they, you know, I mean, obviously, Caledonia is not a familiar opponent for them. I mean, yes, Caledonia is coming in. You look at that record and say, okay, Caledonia, you know, coming in with a 12 and 1 record. I mean, like 11 and 1 record. Only loss was to Rockford. They were just completely shackled by Rockford. They got the revenge on them. Um, but I just didn't think that, you know, that they would shut out Clarkston. People are going to think, like, how do you shut them out? You know, when you have a team that has players like Desmond Steffens, Brody Cozen, um, you know, then you have Ethan Clark, obviously. And then, you know, but I think the difference was Caledonia's defense, they had a game plan and they stick to that game plan. I know Clarkson prepared well for Mason McKenzie. I mean, McKenzie really struggled in that game against Clarkson's defense. I mean, he only had at least two completions. Unfortunately, one of them was for a touchdown. It was a 17-yard touchdown pass, but still, I thought Clarkson did a really good job on Mason McKenzie. I mean, really, really did. Um, So it was really, it was stunning to say the least what happened that game with Clarkson. It really was stunning Um, that Clarkson couldn't score um, you know, I don't know if the weather conditions were, you know, a factor in that. And I know it was, but also when you lose a guy like Mike Hine, um, that does hurt your game planning as well. Um, and then, um, you know, but Steven Kozak, obviously he's had enough experience. You know what I mean? Obviously you're playing against some great competition. He played, he played in the West Bloomfield game, played the Lapeer game, Oak Park game. And then of course against Rochester Adams. Um, where he um, first threw the winning touchdown on Desmond Steffens um, to win that game. Um, I talked to my co-host Anthony Termina about my between Termina's co-host Anthony Termina about um, you know what if Adams played in this game? Um, do you think Caledonia would have had problems with Adams? And I said, you know, I I, I think Caledonia would have gave Adams problems for sure because Adams is not a deep team. I mean, like. Yes, now Park they, they would have had a hard time with Parker Pico, but I just didn't ex- I was shocked how they shut down Ethan Clark. I mean, that really was the one that shocked me the most. Obviously, you know, you look at Clarkston, um, you know, Clarkson wants to do time possession football, obviously, but I was just surprised how Caledonia just shut them down and made Clarkson make mistakes. I mean, I saw a lot of drop passes and completions um in that game. Um Bottom line was, and I'm going to be flat honest with you, I thought Caledonia was the better team this game. I really was. I really did. Um, and they showed it. Um, you can see him celebrating, you know, you know, going to Ford Field. I think it's the first time going there. Um, so Caledonia moves on to Ford Field to take on Belleville. Um, of course, Belleville, we know what they've been going through, obviously, with the suspension of Coach Jermaine Crowell. Um, you know, just got to wish, you know, you just got to move on. And, you know what I mean? For Clarkson, you know, you know, it, for Clarkson, it's really unfortunate. You know, for the OA this year, I mean, like, this, I think it's the first time in a long time. I don't think the league has had a team in the state finals. I don't know if Oakland County has a team represented in in the state finals for football. I mean, that's probably the first in a long time. I don't think Oakland County has been represented in in the division one or in the um in the state finals for football in all eight divisions and including the eight man foot eight man league. Um so you know so when you really look at it here for Oakland County, the OAA fall sports is pretty much over for the year. And it is. Um when you look at the recaps, of course, the shortcomings, I posted the shortcomings on my blog at tag on my forty six fifty at blogspot.com. I've also posted a link on the um on the um o- ONTB um blog as well. So if you want to look at that, um we will have that as well. So when you look at next year for football, um obviously I will be very curious to see where they put Farmington. Um does Farmington make the move up to the white? That's the big question. Um and then um you know, so because they won the blue this year. Um they shared the blue with Seaholm technically, but 
you know, see home pharmacy course winning over see home. Usually, you know, the tiebreaker. Um, I'm curious to see what the red is going to be next year. Obviously Adams loses a lot. Clarkson loses a lot, but I'm curious to see what Clarkson, because they got a nice blend of talent coming back. You got Desmond Steffens coming back. You got the Bowman twins who are going to be really good next year for Clarkson. They might be asked to do more this year for them. Um, I know they had them, um, both of them in the secondary this year for coach Justin Pintar. Um, Lake Orient's a team I'm really watching. I mean, they got a lot of skill players coming back. They have their quarterback coming back. Um, their running backs coming back. Um, their defense is the question mark for Lake Orient next year. Um, Oxford, I think, is going to be better. Um, they got a lot of, they got Dominic Cassisi coming back. You got Johnson, you got the running back coming back. Um, I mean, you got Jake Champagne coming back at wide receiver. Their defense will be better. Um, I think Oxford's going to be a team. I think they're going to be better. Stony Creek loses a lot. Um, West Bloomfield, they lose a lot, but their quarterback's coming back in Raquan Nance. You got Jameer Benjamin also and Amkari Jackson also all coming back as well. Um, so that's something to really watch for um, with the Lakers next year. Um, in the white, you know, Harper Woods is going to be the team I'm watching carefully. I mean, they got all, they were young last year, this year. They were very, very young. And I think with Harper Woods um, adjusting the life in the OAA, it was going to be a very difficult task for them. Um, but I think if there's a team that I think could make a playoff run or maybe make a make it to the postseason, it's going to be, um, I think Harper Woods will be a team to really watch for heading into next year. Um, who knows? I mean, they could surprise some people. Um, Southfield, for them, it's now or never for them. I mean, yes, they got a lot of pieces coming back, a lot of talent coming back. Um, Isaiah Marshall back at quarterback. Yeah, Tyson Bracewell at wide receiver. Um, I think for a and you really got to look at the future now. Because you look at this, you're putting everything on next year. I mean, that's really what it's setting up for. Because it's Isaiah Marshall's senior year. I mean, so when you look at A&T, um, it's clear to me that, you know, for them, it's now or never. Groves, I like them coming back. They got a lot coming back next year. Um, and then you look at... um. And then, of course, you have um, Bloopy Hills. I'm curious to see what happens with them. Oak Park, they lose a lot. Um, so I'm very curious to see what the Knights have coming back. Um, and then in the blue, obviously, you got, I mean, like the blue, Farmington, we've already talked about. I think the best team in that division next year is Seahome, um, especially with they got the Kinney brothers coming back. Um, they've got some good pieces. I like Kyle Robbins as well. They're running back. Um, I think he'll be in line for a good year. Um, and then you have, um, and then, I've, and then of course you have, um, you know, North Farmington. I'm curious to see what happens. Who's going to be their quarterback next year. They've got a lot to replace next year. Um, Troy, they lose a lot. They got Nolan Block coming back. Parker Vandenberg, a quarterback. Line plays a big question mark for Troy. Um, for Troy, in my opinion, I think they got to play a more tough schedule. Um, if they want to, improve as a program. Troy Athens, I'm really high on next year. I think they're going to be much improved. Um, and then, obviously, in the gold, Ferndale is a team to watch for. Yes, they lose a lot. Um, Avondale, I think, is going to be the sleeper in that division. I, I They got a lot coming back. Of course, Heather Herzog's coming back. Um, Berkeley is going to be very interesting. Um, can Coach Sean Shields find that program from 2021? Um, if he can find that program, you know, from that year and it's all the 2023 team, then I think Berkeley could be back to where they're at. And then, of course, um, Pontiac. Pontiac, of course, we know they're going to be going through a complete. They could go through another complete start over, which is really unfortunate, um, which would be really difficult, I think, for them going forward. Um, and then Royal Oak. I, I, Royal Oak's the one I'm curious because. When you look at the Ravens this year, um, the Ravens really, there was a lot of high expectations with Royal Oak this year. Um, you had Makai Jenkins at running back. You had Hunter Seidel quarterback. Um, Ellie Finch up front. Um, and new coach. 
um, and Dustin Truett. Um, I don't know what's going to happen with Truett next year. I don't know what the direction of the program is. But if there's a team that needs a complete culture change, it's Royal Oak. And I think, you know, when you look at a team like Royal Oak, you, the numbers don't lie. The stats don't lie. Um, and, you know, the fact that Truett was suspended and then, you know, seeing Royal Oak um, last final three games not being really competitive, um, getting outscored um, in all those games. I mean, like, you know, if there's a team that needs a complete reboot, complete culture change, complete start over, it's the Royal Oak Ravens. I mean, that's how I feel bottom line is, you know, is if there's a team that needs a complete reboot, it's Royal Oak. Um, you know, the stats and the stats prove it. The numbers prove it. You know what I mean? You know, stats and numbers don't lie. Bottom line. So we'll see what happens. We will see what happens. Um, but that's my thoughts on the on football. You know, of course, um, I did release the shortcomings on my blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. Um, you know, so we'll see what happens going forward there. Okay, now let's go from football, fall sports. We're heading into the winter. Volleyball, I mean, girls basketball starts next week. Um, for first start of the games, obviously, the um, the um, winter, um, I mean, the winter sports are just about underway. Um, we're going to preview girls basketball. Um, when you look at the divisions, obviously, it's a, um, for girls, it's a three-team division. We're going to break down each division, the blue, the white, and the red. Um, let's go from blue first. Um, when you look at the blue, um, I think, and I think we should start my early top 10. Um, obviously the top 10 here for girls basketball. Um, of course I will have the blog preview released, um, this weekend. Um, maybe in the next day or two, maybe after Thanksgiving for sure. Um, but the top team in the league is West Bloomfield. Um, and for good reason. The reason why West Bloomfield, obviously you have the Davis twins, you have the Hendricks sisters, you have them, um, Destiny Washington. The question for me, West Bloomfield is going to be the bench. Um, we're going to break that. We're going to break the red down in a couple minutes. But West Bloomfield is my top team to start the year. Division one state champions defending. Um, really good team coming back. Bench is a little concerning for me this year when I look at West Bloomfield. Number two, I got Lake Orion. And the reason why I say Lake Orion, they're loaded. I mean, you look at Lake Orion, you look at players like Maddie Ebert, Chloe Wiegers, Audrey Wishmeyer, Taylor Dinda. Um, you know, you name it with Lake Orion, they got it. I mean, they're loaded. I mean, this might be, this might be the most deepest team I have seen in my years doing basketball. And Lake Orion can go at least 11 deep. That's how, that's how good this team is. They got a promising player to watch, Izzy Wachinski. You got proven defense, you have, you have proven defensive stoppers, Grace Sullivan, Jody McCaffrey. They are proven defensive stoppers. Um, you got proven shooters as well. Um, you know, and when I look at the Dragons, you know, this might be one of Coach Bob Bridges' best teams that he's had at Lake Orient, and that says a lot. And when you look at the Dragons, you know, with the depth they have, um, the only weakness I have with this team is size, but Lake Orient's definitely... Lake Orion, I think, could be a really good team this year. Um, they're my number two team right now in the um, top 10 to start the year. Number three, I got is Oxford. Um, people are going to say, well, Oxford, you know, Oxford, I think, may have the best starting five. People are going to say, well, what about West Bloomfield? Yes, they got a good starting five, but when you look at a starting five, when you look at players like Sophia Robb, you look at Allison Huffsetter, Nevaeh Wood, Miranda Winemco, and then Peyton Richter coming back from injury, you know, that says a lot about that lineup. I mean, Oxford's got a pretty good lineup when you look at them. They're pretty good starting five. The bench is a big-time question mark for the Wildcats, but no doubt they're one of the favorites in the white this year. So when I look at the Wildcats, you know, it's a good number to have them there at number three to start the year. Number four I got is the Rochester Falcons. Um, when I look at Rochester, you have the Twin Towers. Um, Alice Mack, um, Kylie Robinson. Guard plays the question. I mean... <laughs> Yes, you have Natalie Race, you have Abby Pleasant, Stevie Norgrove. Um, the question's going to be for Coach um, Bill Thurston's going to be is can they find a true point guard? That is the big time question mark for for Thurston and the Falcons. I mean, they look good in their um in their summer league and and their um 
in the in the in the, in the scrimmage um <laughs> over at um I think they were I'm not sure where they were at but they looked pretty good over there um but Rochester but I, Rochester's got a lot of talent I mean definitely they got some depth um I I they could challenge Lake Orion when it comes to depth but I just think when you look at Rochester they're gonna ride the Twin Towers this year and they're I think they're gonna have a big year I really do um so we'll see what happens with Rochester going forward there. But they're my number four team this this um in the pull start year. <laughs> number five, I got Clarkston. Um, yes, they, anytime you lose Manny Sarovsky and um, Izzy Hadley, that's going to be a big loss. But you got some players I'm really high on. I mean, Claire Walker back, Kira Tomey. Um, I mean, Ava Hernandez. I mean, like, there's some good players that Coach Aaron Goodenough has coming back. Um. And obviously, I think Clarkson, they could surprise some people. I think they might be more dangerous this year than they were last year with Sarovsky because you don't know who's going to be the player that, you know, is going to be the um who's going to be the top player one night. Then he might have a, a one player one night, another player the other night. I mean, like, <laughs> you know, so when you look at Clarkson, you know, that's how good that, that I think that team can be. Um, number six, I got Stony Creek. Um I think the Cougars, obviously, they're going to ride. They're, they're going to ride Emily Flynn. They're going to ride Sarah LaPrairie um, and Mia Carson. Their guards are going to be very good. Um, interior is a big question mark. Can Liberty Allen step up? That's a big question for Coach Kellen James. Um, if they can, if the interior is the key for Stony Creek. If they can find anyone to compliment Allen, I think that's going to be, uh, that'll be a big time help for Coach Kellen James. Um, but they're going to be really guard heavy this year. Um, so I got Stony Creek's my number six team right now in the poll. Number seven I got is, um, Groves. Um, Groves has got a lot coming back for Coach Allison Heidi. Um, of course, um, you know, look at player like Caitlin Sanders coming back. They got some others as well. Um, they lose one senior. They lost one senior last year. Um, I think Groves, they could surprise some people this year. Um, we will see what happens with them. I, I think Groves could make some noise um, this season. Uh, they could. I mean, who knows? I mean, we'll see what happens. Number eight I got is Berkeley. Um, obviously, with the run they had last year, um, Ashley Loon um, now has graduated. They got some other key players um, coming back for Coach Cody Feltner. Um, Jillian Gomes, I'm high on. Ava Beard. Um, Avery Wintergarden, I'm really high on her this year. Um I mean, Fowler's got some pieces, you know. Yes, you lose Loon, that's a big deal. But Berkeley, they I think they could surprise some people. I mean, I really do. I mean, you know, who knows? I really think Berkeley could do some damage this year in that division. So who knows? Um, number nine, I got a C home. Um, when you look at the Maples, Coach Chris Manchester's done a really good job building that program. Um, Annie Bulgari and Shea Manchester. Um, I think C home could they got to make that next step. If they can make the next step, I think Seaholm could be a team that, um, you know, could surprise some people in the white. Um, I think they could. I mean, like, Seaholm, they won the blue last year, beat Harper Woods twice. Um, I really think the Maples, you know, I think they're ready for this division. I really do. Um, we'll see what happens going forward with them. And then my number 10 team um, might be a shock to a lot of people, but I got Bloomby Hills. And the reason why is you look at what Bloopy Hills has gone through. I mean, you know, obviously you got you got player Ruby Smith coming back. You got um Ashley Forner coming back. Um, but this team was really struggled last year being in the white. Now they're in the blue. Um, you know, coach I'm Chris and Massey's done a really nice job of the program. She's building depth, she's building the program the right way. Um <laughs> I think Bloopy Hills, you know, could be the favorite in the blue this year, just with the talent they got coming back. Um, so when I look at Bloopy Hills, we'll see what happens. But that is my top ten for girls basketball course. They're gonna be releasing the blog at Saginaw Bay forty six fifty at blogspot.com. Probably be released maybe around after Thanksgiving. Um, so we'll see what happens with them going forward there. Um, and then let's look at the divisions. Obviously the um divisions, um Let's go to the blue first. As I mentioned earlier, Bloomfield Hills, right now I have them as my favorite because of the experience coming back. Um, playing in that division, it's going to be, um, you know, when you look at the blue division this year, there's really not a lot of, not a lot of like, um, 
you know, quality, but, you know, who knows? I mean, there could be a sleeper that comes out of that division. Who knows? I mean, Bloomfield Hills right now, I think, is the favorite. Farmington, I think, is the second best in that division. Yes, they did lose their um top player from a year ago, um, but they got um they got Jasmine Yakins. I'm high on her. Um, you know, I mean, like um, they got others as well. Of course, I've got that on the blog as well. But I'm really high on Coach Laura Guzman's team, even though they did lose their top player from a year ago, um, and six other seen and seven and six other seniors from a year ago. But I think Farmington could be a team that could definitely give Bloopy Hill some problems. Um, this season, um, Ferndale University is another one that I think could give, could give, um, some teams problems this year. I'm really high on Coach St. Hester's team. Last year, they got to the district final, um, losing the Detroit Country Day. Um, I think the Eagles could be a team that could be in line for a good year. Um, and I think they will be. Um, so we'll see what happens with, um, Ferndale University, but I'm really high on them this year. Um, to make some noise. Um, Avondale, you know, with them, it's, it's kind of tough with them because with Avondale, it's just, it's hard to figure them out because they lost their two top players in Savannah Schmidt and Reagan Lawrence, both graduated. Who's going to be that next girl to step up? Is it Madison May Is it Madison Mannyweathers? Is it Lily Titus? I mean, I don't know. I mean, Coach Roy Christian's got to figure that one out. I mean, you know, who's going to be their top players? Who's going to be their depth situation? How's your bench going to look? There's a lot of questions with Avondale coming up this year. A lot of questions with that program. Um, when you look at Pontiac, Pontiac, they're putting together a program. Um, Coach um, Raul Marshall, you know, is really toughing up their non-conference, which is a really good sign. Um, Pontiac could surprise some people this year. Who knows? Um, but they couldn't surprise some people there. Who knows? Ferndale's got a new coach in Keith Paris. Um, a lot of talent coming back, but they really haven't had um, program stability, and I think that's a big problem. Um, if Paris can stay there long term um, <laughs> and build the program, build that program strength, um, then I think Ferndale could surprise some people this year. And then there's Oak Park. Obviously, it was a really tough year for them last year. They had issues scoring. Um, but when I look at Oak Park, um, you know, I don't know what the talent number is over there. Um, but I think they will. They should be able to score more this year. Um, defense, a big-time question mark for the Knights um, going forward there. So we'll see what happens with them. But when I look at the division right now, what I'm seeing, I think Bloomfield Hills has got to be the favorite, followed by Farmington, Ferndale U, Avondale, um, Pontiac, Ferndale, and Oak Park. That is my... Um, early projections right now in the um, blue division. Let's go to the white now. Um, Oxford, obviously, I, with what they got coming back, um, I think they have one of the best starting fives in Oakland County. Um, I think they're the top team to watch. Um, North Farmington is going to be very interesting. Now, why didn't I break North Farmington? It's pretty simple. Um, yes, they got a lot of talent coming back. You got Stella Leffler, Penelope Query. You got Jihad, they're coming back. You got, they got, they got Soapy Muller coming back. I mean, like, Coach Jefferson just got a lot coming back. But when I looked at the scrimmage that they had, I mean, yes, it was a tough scrimmage, but I think they looked really good. Um, yes, I mean, like, um, I, I, I mean, curious to see how North Farmington does in this division. Um, there's a lot of question marks for Coach Jefferson's team. I know that he said that this, they're going to be good this year. They're going to be very good. Um, yes, that trap, that one, two, two, four court trap that they run. Um, I will be very curious to see what happens there with North Farmington. Um, they got a favorable district, even though they're going to have to get by Farmington with Mercy, um, which is going to be a really tough task come March. Um, but I think North Farmington, they're more than capable of having a good year. I mean, I think they're more than capable. Um, we'll see what happens with them. Um, then I have Berkeley. Um, Berkeley, when you look at the Bears... Um, obviously losing Ashley Lou, and that's going to be a big loss. Um, but you still have Bobby Nolan. You still have, um, Avery Wintergarden. You still have Jillian Gomes. Um, there's some pieces there for coach, um, for coach Cody Feltner. Um, I really think that they're going to make some noise this year in that white. Um, I'm really high on him. I hope he can change some things up a little bit. I know he did that against Detroit Renaissance. 
um, when that and that shocker last year. Um, but I'm curious to see what Berkeley has this season. Um, how they do without Ashley Loon? That's going to be very interesting to see what happens this year with the um, Bears. Um, number f I got then I got Seaholm next. I I think the Maples, as I mentioned earlier, um, you know a lot of good returning talent. Annie Booger in there. Um, you got um. Shea Manchester, I mean, like, you got a lot of good talent there with, um, with Seaholm. Um, I think they're going to make some noise. Program strength is a little concerning for me. Um, so we'll see what happens with them going forward there. Um, I think Seaholm could be in line for another, for a very good year this year. She's got to make that next step. That's going to be the question mark for Seaholm going forward there. Then I have Harper Woods. Um, the Pioneers, um, they're, they're going to be up this year. They got, they're up in the division. Um, after winning 19 games a year ago, they're up in Division One for the postseason um, with an enrollment hike. Um, they got, I mean, for Coach Paul Allen, it's going to be really interesting to see how they do in up in the white because that's going to be the something really interesting to keep an eye on. Um, I think that'll be something to really, really watch for um, with with them is going to be is how will they do? That is a big time question there for them. Royal Oak is going to be interesting. Because last year, they had a complete disaster. Um, now, you know, with them, they got some experience back. Ellie Finch there and that. Ellie Finch, I think, is their top player um, for Coach Brian Zapata. They got others as well. Um, they can get their, back to their defense-first mentality. I think Royal could surprise some people. Um, so we'll see what happens there in that division there. Um, Troy Athens, they have a lot coming back. Ellie Musco and... Um, you know, I'm curious to see how Alex Wink does. I mean, like, they got Skyler Emerson as well, but Alex Wink's the wild card here. I, I just think that she can be, you know, who knows what's going to happen and what Coach Casey Klump's going to do. Uh, but I think Alex Wink is the one to really watch for with Troy Athens. And then Rochester Adams. Um, when you look at the Highlanders, um, you know, la I mean, this summer was, it was really rough for Coach Jimmy, for Coach Joe Malberg. Um I think it's going to be really interesting to see what Adams has. Obviously, Samantha Blaine's back and I Howard's back. Um, you know, but I'm curious to see out of this. And I've talked to Adams and athletic director Brian Hosler about, um, you know, how the Adams is going to look. I mean, like, and he's really high on this freshman class. And, you know, there's a, there, I mean, the question's going to be is, can they handle a 22 game season? That's the big time question for Coach Joe Malberg. Um, so we'll see what happens. I mean, like, um, I, I think I think when you look at the white this year, the order projected order I got is um is Oxford, North Farmington, um, Berkeley, Royal Oak, Seaholm, Harper Woods, um, Troy Athens, and Adams. Um, that is the early projections in the white division um, this up this season. And then the red, obviously we West Bloomfield, we know what they got. Um, when you look at both Henrik sisters, um. Both Davis twins, um, and then Destiny Washington like to be in that fifth starter. Bench is the big question for Coach um, Daryl McAllister. That's going to be the big time question mark is can he develop that bench and you know not just rely on those five. You know that could be a problematic issue if um, you know if one or two of those girls get hurt for West Bloomfield. I mean that's going to be the big question. Program strength is a serious concern for West Bloomfield this year um, going forward there. Um, Lake Orion, we talked about their depth. <laughs> Anytime we return players like Maddie Ebert, Chloe Wiegers, Grace Sullivan, um, Jody McCaffrey, Ryan Palazak, um, Audrey Wishmeyer, um, you know, and Grace Sullivan, I mean, like, um, et cetera. You look at what Coach Bob Bridges has, and that is scary. And and the player to watch for for Lake Orion is Izzy Wachinski, only a sophomore. Really good player, really talented player. Um, you know, a lot of people are high on Wachinski. I, I think I am one of those guys too that I'm high on her. I think she's gonna have a great year for Lake Orion. Um, you know, and she doesn't even start for this team, and that's scary. You know, that says something right there. Really does. Um, Rochester, I have next. Obviously, we talked about the um, you know, the twin towers with them, Alice Max and um, you know, Kylie Robinson. Guard plays a big time question for them. Can they find a two point guard? Big time question mark for Coach Bill Thurston and his team. Uh, um, Groves I have next, um, when you look at the Falcons, got a lot coming back, everybody's back, led by Caitlin Sanders, 
Um, we'll see what happens going forward there with them. I mean, like, they got a lot back. Program strength is a big-time conservative coach, Allison Heidi. Um, so we'll see what happens with Groves um, with them. Stony Creek, um, we talked earlier about them. Obviously, Sarah LaPrairie is the top player along with, um, you know, Mia Carson. Emily Flynn's the one I'm watching. Um, Liberty Allen's the one I'm really watching. Can she find, can she develop an interior play that Coach Kellen James is looking, is looking for? That's the big time question for Stony Creek this year when you look at the Cougars this year. Um, and then you have Troy. Of course, Troy lost a lot of talent from a year ago. That team that went to state quarterfinals. Oh, man. I mean, you got Lizzie Budnick coming back. You have Avery Allen back. Um, Zoe Silver's back. Um, there are some pieces there for Troy, but they really haven't had them. Um, but I'm very curious to see what if they're going to have to step up, obviously. And that's the question mark that I have with Troy is can they, you know, and they have some promising freshmen coming up. Um, not sure if they're up on varsity or not, but you know, there are some promising players that coming up within the program. And then there's another, there's a couple of Ziders in the program as well. The really watch for as well. I think Reagan Ziders up on varsity already. Um, and I know there's another one coming as well. So, you know, the Zider name, you know, lives on in Troy. So we'll see what happens with the Colts. Um, going forward there. And then there's South Arts and Tech. I mean, when you look at the Warriors this year, um, a and T's the biggest question mark. And the reason why I say this for Coach Coach Shakia Coltrane, Coach yes, you got players like Christian um, Christian Banks. You have players like, um, you know, you have Kamara Page. Um, and then you have um, Jalen Austin. But the big question I have with a and has always been that mystery. And the mystery is like this. A and T is like a, you know, you it's it's the great mystery describing A and T because when you look at Southfield, when they play against bad teams, they usually blow them out. They usually beat them, and then when they play against good teams, they're the ones that get blown up. I mean, something's got to give if you're A and T. I mean, yes, I saw that scrimmage against Celine where they um. They had a very tough loss there um, to the Hornets, um, but they looked better, um, which is a good sign. Obviously, with A&T, um, it's going to come down to is, is A&T more than capable of competing in this division? And I also forgot to mention Clarkson in this one. Can't believe I forgot Clarkson. Um, but I think with Clarkson, I think the Wolves are a team that they're going to be good. They got depth. Um I think the Wolves are a team that could really make some noise um, this year. I, I I like what Coach Aaron Goodnell has. I mean, obviously, when you look at, yes, he lose two very good players in Maddie Swarovski and um, Izzy Hadley. Um, Claire Walker, Kira Tomey, Ava Hernandez, um, you know, are players to really watch for this year with the Wolves. Um, I will be very curious to see what happens with Clarkston this season. Of course, they're going to be a player in the red this year. Um, <laughs> so we'll see what happens with them. So my overall projections of the red I got is, um, I got West Bloomfield one. I got Lake Orion two, Rochester three, Clarkston four, um, five. I got Groves six is Stony. Actually five is Stony Creek. Six is Groves. Seven is, um, Troy and eight is Southfield Arts and Tech. That is my, um, projections right now early on when I'm looking at the teams coming into the um 2022-2023 season um when you look at for girls basketball um I think you know the top 10 makes sense um so we'll see what happens um obviously the games start next week before um you know we go into Thanksgiving obviously um you know we start after Thanksgiving break obviously the first game start I mean like um so we'll be very curious to see what happens going forward there. Um, before I sign off here, I wish everybody the best of um, luck in boys basketball tryouts. Of course, boys start today. Um, the girls already have their teams figured out, already in the thick of scrimmages before they start playing next week for real. Um, we'll see what happens going forward. Um, you know, so I wish everybody the best of luck um, and have a very good, happy Thanksgiving um, to everybody around OA Nation, obviously. Um, 
you know, so that is something to really, really watch for going forward. Um, especially, I know when you look at football, a lot of people look at, you know, they look at Turkey, you look at football, you know, you look at spending time with family. Um, and that's something that, um, I hope everybody in OA Nation around and around the um, entire world, um, does, um, this upcoming Thanksgiving. I mean, I know it's tough, but we're always, always there for each other. So we'll see what happens going forward. We'll see what happens going forward there. All right, I'm going to sign off here. Um, take care. God bless everybody. And I will see you all next week. Everybody take care. And I'll see you all next week. See you later, everybody.